Greetings this Advent for the seventh episode of the Young Adult Jubilee series. I'm Father Sherwin and join me here is Donna May. <laughs> the coordinator for the Youth and Young Adult Ministries in our parish. And we begin this uh, episode with a reading from this Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday of the season of Advent from the Gospel according to John. This is a testimony given by John when Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then he said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am, the bo I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They ask him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Donna May, so this will be our last series this year yes. for the youth and young adult. Uh, how do you prepare yourself for Christmas during this Advent? Um, usually for Advent, it's a lot of involved, involving the church. We, um, as a family, spend a lot of time uh, together just attending, if we can, daily Masses or especially the nine-day Novena. Um, and then at home, it's a lot of like daily reflections on the readings and the rosary um, as a family, definitely. and. Um, it's like a time where we reflect on what the year has been and also preparing ourselves for the new year. Like um, Advent is a mark of a beginning with Jesus' um, coming. So I guess that's how we kind of prepare. Mm. There was a saying that I love uh, seeing it in homes. The family that prays together stays, stays together. together. <laughs> and I think it's just a good thing for Advent is to once again look in the importance of family mm. because that's exactly the story of Christmas, isn't it? Mm. Where where God decided not to be born uh, you know, out of nowhere or just with miraculously being born somewhere else, but he decided to be born of a family of Mary and Joseph and that actually sanctifies every family mm -hmm. isn't it yeah. so imagining like jesus being part of your family is something to be you know to prepare uh and to acknowledge as well that in each and every family jesus is part of it mm -hmm. because he blessed and consecrated the the family yeah, yeah. definitely yeah and of course um jesus is a huge part of the family especially in mine um he is the center of everything that we do and of course with him coming with Christmas and um, around the corner and everything like that uh, the decorations are up at home and the most um, decoration that we put um, effect into is the nativity um, mm. set that we have and it's quite nice because the baby Jesus will be there and on the 25th <laughs> yes yeah. and 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 I think this is also important for for all those young people out there, especially also the young adult, is the importance of family because everything begins and ends in a family. Like uh, vocation starts in a family and also it's nurtured and, and, and sustained through the family, mm -hmm. isn't it? And also my experience is when ministering to people who are dying is normally the families around that uh, that person who are passing through the next life to always gather there and and be as a family 
to give farewell to the person. So the importance really of growing in a family. But the question is, how do we, how do we sanctify and, 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 and put holiness to families? Because we also have to accept that there are many broken families out there or not even uh, you know, a family to be called or to be acknowledged with. But how do we sanctify relationships in family? Mm, well, for me, I guess I can only base it on um, my family. And for us, uh, it's the key thing for our relationship is communication. It's um, being open to one another if there's any issues within the family or even outside, whatever we're experiencing. It's about talking it out um, with all of them and then in the end, like bringing prayer into it and bringing God once again as a center to heal anything that's happened or to give guidance and I guess um, also knowing the role of everyone in the mm. family so I'm the middle child and um, I see myself as someone who uh, understands my brother um, the older one and then um, who will guide my younger sister and um, you know, I really thought the middle child is a problematic <laughs> one. Oh, uh, well. Oh, <laughs> uh, could be. I don't know. You could ask my parents that. <laughs> um, but definitely, um, I think having the role of a middle child is quite um, in interesting in a way because you don't know where you kind of put yourself in. Like, you have to be mature for your sister to look up to you, but also, you know, you want to be like young because you have an older brother that should be doing the um, responsibilities before you sort of thing but um yeah i enjoy the position i have in my family mm. and i see my parents um their love for us is equal regardless of our age and where we are and i guess um that's what i'm really thankful for for them that all their decisions and stuff like that is um, for our own good and i know mm. that they always pray um for, for those um, I like when you mention about relationship because not every family uh, is by blood mm. it could be family because of the relationship that they develop mm. uh, through one another and and I think that that's uh, what makes a family is not not just blood but also the relationship that you build through time and the connection that you have with a person mm. because anyone can be a family to you as long as you have a deep set, a deep connection, that respect, uh, that uh, mutual uh, understanding. understanding, and also the love and care that emanates uh, through and among the members of uh, that family, mm -hmm. uh, and it's 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 good thing nowadays because uh, sometimes you know you you are far away from from home, yeah. from your family, and you felt like you're so isolated out here in New Zealand, for example or wherever you may be and said, oh, my family is all back there, but thanks to COVID, I cannot be with them <laughs> uh, and I'm just alone. And then suddenly you find family and solace with your, yeah. with your friends yes. and also with your, uh, your workmates or, your, or even your distant re relations yeah. and you become family. So I think that's a good thing about being Christian is that regardless of where you may find yourself with, mm -hmm. if you found a church, that is now your family yeah definitely i think um like you said us being in uh being migrants in new zealand we left our families back home in the philippines and we literally uh settled here with just family friends to look after us and then eventually finding saint mark's as our home parish and that's how we developed our um you know our family and relatives here in new zealand they um, were the ones that we celebrated all our um, achievements, all the um, special occasions, the Christmas and Lent. And I can say that um, they're almost like blood relations to me, like the, um, the brothers and sisters that I have found, not just, you know, my immediate brothers and sisters, but them as well as um, family now because of the church, because of the bond that we shared. Um, and that's also central to um, Jesus, like the youth ministry. I grew up um, in the Youth for Christ, and um, that has a big family ministry. And I'd say all the um, boys and girls that I grew up with, I'm still close with now, mm. and they're my family as well. And we celebrate each other's ups and downs. And, mm. yeah. and remember that even the first family, the holy family, is not a perfect family by any standards. But even by today's standards, you know, 
Mary and Joseph, they were just being engaged and then Mary was found pregnant. And we, we know this story that Joseph was thinking of walking away and you know but not you know silently do, going to divorce mary but the angel you know won over joseph and joseph thought hmm maybe this is an opportunity for me rather than a disappointment that i'll be part of something bigger than myself bigger than just my mm -hmm. relationship with mary now that i'll become uh, a father to the son of god isn't that great mm -hmm. isn't that something that i'm I, i'm being part of and I will not let this opportunity pass by. So he took Mary uh, into his home and that's how they built a family. So you see that, you know, if, if we look opportunities beyond the difficulties, beyond the doubts that we have, beyond the fears that we have uh, in our families or in what we're going through, especially this time, we always can be inspired through the story of the the holy family and remember also jesus you know even rejecting and running away from uh from his parents yeah. and went back to jerusalem and when they eventually it's found him like mary was saying what why do you have to do this one with me and your father and said probably in front of joseph like don't you know that i'm supposed to be in my father's house yeah I mean, if i would be joseph like what did you just say yeah. <laughs> But you know, I think this is Mary and Joseph learning that they don't own Jesus. That Jesus has to be Jesus, put it that way. That he needs to he needs to be out there. They're learning now to let go of Jesus so that we too can experience Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're not they're so protective, like, no, this is only for us, for me yeah. and me and Mary. No, you are not allowed there. But you know, learning to let go of Jesus. I think it's also important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, um, the vocations all begin at home, and I strongly believe that we are all called for the vocation to love, and mm. like we need to love um, our home first, our family first, and so we can share that to others as mm. well. And um, like how Jesus, you know, was shared by Mama Mary and um, Saint Joseph, is I guess a good learning. Um, analogy for us as well to share um ourselves and mm. to you know set us free sort of thing mm. in the family um i think uh like you know parents struggling to let their kids go out and be exposed to mm. other people and um i think yeah it's a good reminder mm. of that and also one thing that i found about the holy family is that they're also migrants <laughs> as probably many of us are uh, they they were migrants. They were enjoying their time over in in uh, uh, Bethlehem, mm -hmm. the hometown of uh, Joseph, and probably was settling in well now. And Jesus was probably you know was being the talk of town, a new celebrity because wise men from the east went <laughs> to visit this child, offering them gifts uh, and 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 all these things. And then suddenly there was another message that they need to depart because Herod is chasing, chasing after mm. uh, after the baby. So Joseph, you know, uh, uh, probably at, uh, early in the morning or middle of the night, uh, took Mary and Joseph, uh, took Mary and Jesus, and they went down to of all places to Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. That's where the ancestors of Joseph were were slaves Thanks. for so many years. And, and imagine that journey, like going back to the very place your ancestor had been slaves. Must be, must be something mm. for Joseph, like, okay, but then I need to follow uh, whatever it takes to protect and preserve this holy family. So yeah. they went down. And probably when they were already, you know, really integrated themselves in, in Egypt and another command came in, like, okay, it's now time for you to go back. <laughs> like we're just up, 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 setting in we're already like earning a lot here you know uh, and and jesus is you know enjoying the uh, the, the pyramids and the camels and everything <laughs> like that so why do we need to go back but again because of the role that they need to play they need to go back mm -hmm. so it's interesting to 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 know 
that even the Holy Family were refugees and migrants yeah. as well. Like finding your own footing. And mm. it's amazing because they did it as a family. Because, mm. um, you know, they could have easily, like how the situation is now, one stays in Bethlehem and the others mm. move on to Egypt. But no, they traveled all that journey together mm. as a family. And I guess with St. Joseph's decision, um, he was the head of their family. So he had to probably make a really hard decision mm. to go back to and start from scratch again mm. um, in Bethlehem after their shifting mm. so that's something that's quite amazing with um, the Holy Family and I guess a lot of us can relate to when um, there's big decisions that have to be made it's mm. really I think a family decision as mm. well yeah that's why I really love that quote it's a family that prays together stays together, stays together. Mm. so that's all for the seventh episode of this uh, Jubilee uh, series and thank you once again Donna May for being with us and hopefully you have a good Advent preparation as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Messiah this Christmas 2020. It will be a different Christmas probably for everyone to talk about but probably the most memorable one that we're going to recall that yes we survived the COVID-19 <laughs> this year. Have a blessed Advent journey and we'll see you around Christmas time. Oh, before we um, oh. finish off the series, um, like Father mentioned in the beginning, this is the final Young Adults Jubilee series that we'll be putting out. And of course, we want to say thank you to Father Sherwin for um, going through all the episodes uh, with us and giving us all the pastoral teachings and learnings. And also, we want to extend our thanks to Ryan from the Holy Cross Seminary and Joseph from the Marist Seminary okay. for joining us as well and not to mention alice soon who's oh, always yes. behind and lastly alice thank you so much for being behind uh, the, camera. the camera and doing the editings and we couldn't have done it without everyone's support and we're really looking forward to um what the podcast will develop into in the future for the parish so yeah thank you so much again for everyone who tuned in as well and who gave feedback and it really touches our heart to know that you guys um, took something away from all these videos that we've put out. So thank you once again and Merry Christmas as well. Thank you.